Amazon FBA product research. Where do you go in 2024 to find products that will actually sell, uh, validate those products will sell well, that there's not too many other sellers and that the product will actually make money. In today's video, I'm gonna go over Amazon FBA product research. Where's the best places to look and find products to sell for Amazon FBA private label. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back. Those of you who are my subscribers. My name is Brian Noonan. I'm a full-time Amazon FBA seller, mentor, and coach. Right here on this YouTube channel, I release monthly videos covering everything Amazon, e-commerce, and personal development. If you enjoy those types of videos, do me a favor right now, head on down and press subscribe. I can see each and every one of you who take just a minute to press subscribe, and I appreciate each of you. Also, give me a like on this video. It helps support my channel and bring you more helpful videos like this. My job right here on this channel is to help educate, teach, impact as many lives as possible, sharing and documenting my journey of how I went from a struggling, broke drug addict nine years ago to building, owning, and running multiple six-figure online businesses. Let's jump into it. All right, guys. Well, welcome to today's video. Excited to have you here. I have a new office and studio I redid, painted the walls, got some new art. Uh, behind me some new lighting so I hope you guys like it it's uh, really more comfortable I also got a new desk it's one of those uh, standing automatic up and down standing desks it's the one from Costco if you guys are in the market for a new desk I really like it glass top white lots of uh, plugins and stuff uh, makes it really nice if you want to stand or sit while you're uh, working so let's jump into it so what we're gonna go over today is product research right the most important part of selling on Amazon is having a good product and let's face it in 2024, the market has got way more saturated with lots more sellers. And so it's even more important than ever that we are looking for unique products, finding good products that will actually sell well and be profitable and that won't just not sell or sell, but not be profitable and just all your money goes to Amazon. So this video will be helpful for those of you who are brand new to Amazon FBA private label. You're just looking for your very first product. You'll find lots of great value and tips in there. Or even if you've already launched a product or two and you're looking for your next product, where are the best places to go find products and how do you validate that it's a good one? All right, so my best tip to go over just to start with here on product research in 2024 is gonna be to uh, find a good niche. Uh, a niche is like a specific category or segment uh, uh, of products. So find a good niche and then sell products that solve a problem, all right? So products that solve problems tend to be needed, so customers have to buy them. I like that better than just a kind of random decor item. Does that make sense? So uh, let me just quickly go over the product research checklist here, kind of what I look for in products, and then I'll show you where to go find these uh, products and then uh, how to uh, analyze them, all right? So uh, what we're gonna be looking for once we do get a product idea is we're gonna be wanting to make sure that the sales and the revenues are good, you know, at least the majority of the sellers on page one are doing over 300 sales a month, that half of the sellers or more on page one have relatively lower reviews. That means you can come in there as a new seller and it's not gonna take you months and months to build up your reviews before you make any sales. So we're gonna be looking at review counts. Is the product seasonal? Meaning does it really only sell during the summer or winter? We want a product that sells year round. Um, are there less than three to five pages of results? We don't want the same product over and over and over again. That's a saturated market. Is there no big brands dominating? We don't wanna compete against Ninja and Cuisinart and, and you know these bigger brands. So I'll show you how to look for that or products where it's dominated by Chinese sellers or Amazon's brands. Can you improve the product? This is one of the most important things. Don't sell the same product as 50 other sellers. You need to improve it. You need to design it yourself. You need to redo it and make it your own. And that sounds hard, but really guys, that just comes down to like reading the reviews uh, of what Amazon customers have said about the product of your competitors. You know, find two or three or four things you can improve upon and then you go to the manufacturer with those things that you want to work on and you work with your manufacturer or product designer, both of them, uh, or both of them to design the product. Okay, so we're going to niche down. We're going to find a product that solves a problem. And then we're going to bring our unique product into the market. We have to be careful, though, that when I say niche down, I do mean go more specific into a subcategory of a main category. But it's, it's tricky because you don't want to go into too small of a market or niche where there's not enough demand, right? Where your product won't sell. So I'll show you how you kind of validate that through sales, revenues, keywords, and that kind of stuff. All right, so is the product under five to eight pounds we don't, and not oversized? We don't want to sell heavy and large items. There's no money or profit left over after you pay for the cost uh, of the product and shipping and FBA fees. Is the search volume for the main keywords above 2,000 a month? Um, is it not sold in most physical stores? It's not a commodity. We don't want to sell, you know, plant pots, 
lights, uh, lamps, sheets, towels, pillows, rugs, wine glasses, plates, pillows, none of that. That's all too saturated, millions of those already on Amazon. We're trying to find kind of unique products where we can be one of the first 30 sellers with that product on Amazon. Um, so not sold in most stores, not a commodity, not too saturated. The product is not patented. So we check on patents.google.com. Is there any live patents on the product? We don't want to sell patented items. You guys would be surprised um, that the majority of the products on Amazon are not patented, meaning you can sell them, which is great. Um, we also don't want to sell any uh, products that contain trademark material like Star Wars, NFL. Um, is the net profit margin after all the fees, 30% or more? Does the product solve a problem? Is the total market revenue for the niche over half a million dollars? Or we could say over $300,000 or more if it's an up and coming market. Is the product restricted or gated? Uh, restricted products are like food and grocery, supplement, some gun accessories, um, some lighting products, electronic items are restricted. So how do you check for restrictions? Uh, I can uh, show you that or just do a search through your Amazon seller account, go to catalog, uh, go, to add, go to catalog, then type in the name of the product and you wanna see that on the right side, it says sell yours, sell yours, sell yours. If it comes back and says you need approval to list in topical products, that's restricted. Just depends on the product and the category. How easy is it to get approval? You know, for pesticide devices like ultrasonic pest repellers, uh, that just requires you live in the USA and do an e-learning course. Uh, more difficult though would be like products that um, are like uh, ingestible, like supplements. That's going to be a little bit more difficult, uh, especially for new sellers to go in there and get uh, ungated. So we just want to find you know a balance there where the product is uh, not easy to sell but it's not super restricted. Uh, for, for example, I would stay away from gun accessories, um, You know, some baby safety items you gotta be careful with because Amazon may take down your listing uh, even if they let you list it or sell it in the beginning, all right? So we wanna check for limitations, make sure it's not restricted uh, or a banned item, tobacco related, smoking related products, nothing like that. Uh, total results, so this is important. When you actually search for the product on Amazon, we wanna take a look in the top left here there's a number right here, it says 804. I like there to be 1000 results or less for the product, okay? That'd be a good sign. So uh, less than three to five pages of the product over and over and over, no more than 30 sellers of the same product already on Amazon and around a thousand results or less, the lower the better for that total results. All right guys, that's kind of gonna go over kind of the checklist we're gonna be looking for. Now let's go over where do you actually find good products to sell? Four places I would go today to find new products. Black box from Helium 10, using the products and the keywords tab. That'd be the first place I'd start. Number two, I would go to Etsy. I would look at Etsy in the different categories to get product ideas there. Next, I would look at TikTok. Those would be my top three, black box, Etsy, TikTok. And then finally, just kind of looking on the Amazon platform, including the rabbit hole method, the storefront method, uh, best sellers, new release lists. So just kind of doing research on Amazon's platform. Let's start with black box guys. Uh, I'm gonna go under the keywords tab. I like to use both products and keywords tab, even sometimes niche or competitors or product targeting tabs. But these are the two I use the most, products tab, keywords tab. Under the keywords tab, what I like about using this guys is it brings open a whole niche versus under the products tab, it's just gonna be one product by one product by one product. So I do like to use the keywords tab. Here's some of the filters I enter, at least 3,000 search volume or higher. Monthly revenue, 6,000 to 60,000. Uh, monthly revenue price minimum 18 to $125 in price point. You don't wanna sell products that are under 20 bucks. There's just no profit left over on a 13 or $11 item. Um, review counts, we want the uh, average reviews to be under 455 or the majority of the sellers on page one, you know, have under 350 reviews. Review rating, I go ahead and enter a 4.8 uh, as max or 4.7, 4.6 as max. This means no sellers on page one with the product currently have 5.0 stars. So that means there's room for improvement. Categories, all right, inside products tab, you can do subcategories, which you don't have to, but you can. Um, in keywords tab, we're gonna be selecting a whole category. Here's some of the categories I recommend, guys. Beauty and personal care, health and household, home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, sports and outdoors, tools and home improvement. Now, I did all these categories so I could get as many ideas at once as I can. If your goal is to build like a beauty care or skincare brand, then you'd wanna do like complementary searches to one another at once instead. So example, if you are if you're wanna build a beauty care brand, then do beauty and personal care and health and household as your two category searches at once. 
if your goal is to build like a home and kitchen brand uh, or a home decor brand or a kitchen and dining lifestyle brand, then I would do home and kitchen, kitchen and dining as one search and go that route. Or if you'd like to build kind of a, a sports or an outdoor brand, your complementary categories would be sports and outdoors and patio lawn and garden um, as your two searches. So you can either do all these at once or go more specific uh, at, and, at a time and just do two categories. All right, exclude keywords, guys. We do not want to sell masks, sanitizers, towels, pillows, rugs, curtains, bed sheets, coffee makers. You know, all of these are going to be too saturated, too competitive. So we're going to exclude those. Uh, best sellers rank, we're going to do a max, 75,000 BSR. Monthly sales, the product needs to do at least 250 sales a month or more. And then here, guys, this one's important, competitor revenue. I need at least four or more of the sellers on page one to be doing over 5,000 a month. And I, I need at least four of the sellers on page one to have under 150 reviews. Then we're going to click search. And then what I'm looking for here, guys, is I'm looking at what's the name of the product. Okay. Is it something that kind of solves a problem? It, it's not ice skates. That's seasonal. Everdeen sounds like a brand name. Michigan is a trademark uh, NFL product. B Venom. Uh, no, that's for like a medicine. Can't sell that. Nicotine, no, I'm not selling vape pens or anything related to nicotine. Gummies, I'm not going to sell gummies or supplements. Cheesecloth, table runner, there's kind of already hundreds of thousands of table runners on Amazon, so I'd probably skip that. Heated stadium seat, that's a seasonal item, sells well in the winter and fall. 49ers, trademark brand. Super Bowl, trademark uh, and seasonal. Micro needling pen, okay, that's interesting. May have some restrictions on it, but I would still look into it. Heart-shaped cake pans. No, there's already hundreds of thousands of cake pans and, and cookware on Amazon. Bantan oil is a supplement or medicine. No. Paris Hilton is a brand. Heated chairs, seasonal. Ski wax, seasonal. Garment bags for dance costumes. I've looked into this one. It's too hard. It's just a bag that you put your clothes in. It's too hard to differentiate. Um, a belly booty belt could, could be interesting. Creatine gummies. No, we're not selling gummies or that. What I've done to just keep the video as short as possible and most effective for you guys is I've found one product under each one of these methods, and I want to pull that up and show it to you. That's good. So the first one is going to be this coffee syrup organizer. So let's look at this. What's the category? Is it in a non-restricted category? Yes. Kitchen and dining? Great. Is it FBA? Great. Is it large or standard size? Yes. What's the search volume per month? Wow, it's pretty good. We have 4,400 searches per month. Customers typing this in, looking for it every month on Amazon. I just need 2,000 or more. Is it at a good average price, over $20? Yes, 24. Is it making at least 250 sales a month or more? Yes, 290. Is it making at least 6,000 a month in revenue or more? Yes, it's making 6,700. Is the average BSR under 75,000? Yes, it's 53,000. Is the average reviews under 350? Yes, it's 90. And is it at a 4.8 star average or less? Yes, it's at a 4.6. So we're going to click here. We're going to click view on Amazon. That's going to pull it open here. And then we're going to go up to your Helium 10 X-Ray. Click X-Ray. And that is going to run X-Ray. If you don't have Helium 10, guys, you will need that for product research. It's honestly just the best Amazon software out there. Um, let me move over so you can see me. Uh, it's really just the best Amazon software out there. So if you, want, uh, you don't have Helium 10 yet, there'll be a link down below the video in the description. Click on Helium 10. You'll want the Platinum plan. You can use Noonan 50 to get 50% off month one. And then before your next billing cycle, or if you already have Helium 10, go in there to your billing and enter Noonan 10 to get 10% off every single month. That brings the Platinum plan to about $87 or $89 a month with the 10% off every single month for the Platinum plan, okay? So the first thing I would look at here, guys, is are we under all departments? Yes. Um, are we shipping to a U.S. address? Yes. So we see all the sellers. If you have, um, uh, if you're an international seller and you and you have your international address here, you won't see all the sellers. Only the ones that can ship international. So that's important. 804 results. That's good. Is it under a thousand? Yes. So I like this. We're gonna run X-ray. I don't know why my picture goes behind there, but um, it's okay. So what we're going to look for here, guys, is inside X-Ray, we're going to delete the sponsored ones to start with. We don't want to look at the sponsored listings. Those are sellers paying Amazon to be at the top at the, or on page one. We're going to delete those for now. And then what I look for here, guys, is we're going to look at search volume. That looks good. It's over 2,000. Total market revenue, it's over 300,000. Good. Average BSR went up a little bit, but it's not too far above 75,000. Average revenue is over 6,000. That's good. 
Price point, all these sellers are pretty consistent in their price, $23 to $40. I like that. Sales, it's a little low on some, but there are several here doing around $250, $300 or more. So over $250, over, 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 under, about $250, under, at $250, at $250. So I definitely see potential here. This is a newer product and market, so you could get in early. How do I know it's a newer product and market? Uh, number one, the average results of 800 was low. Number two, the reviews. These reviews are extremely low for a product like this. This is an organizer for coffee guys, uh, syrups, coffee syrups. So really cool, kind of a unique product. You could really design this. Uh, this one has like a drawer on the bottom. It's got three shelves or tiers. It's made out of metal and wood. So you could change the color of the metal to black. You could change the wood tone to be more medium. You could add a handle that looks different on the front of the drawer. Uh, you can include some maybe labels or pumps uh, with yours for the bottles of um, a syrup, that kind of stuff. I do like this one, though, guys, because it is selling for $40. It's making 250 sales a month. It's making almost $10,000 a month in revenue. And look at the review counts, only nine. Nine reviews only takes a couple of weeks, guys, uh, a week or two to get nine reviews. And if we look at the other reviews, they're very low. So almost all of them are under 350. Actually, almost all of them are under 100 reviews. So this is a new product. You could get in early. This is a good category. Uh, and so I like this idea. Now let's go to open that one seller who's doing well. Let's look at the product. All right, so I see that they only have nine reviews, 4.4 stars, so it can be improved upon. We'd read the three and four stars, find out what customers are complaining about, and then talk to that to our supplier about those improvements. But uh, it's a good price point. Uh, it's a unique item here. It's doing well. Let's take a look at this graph here. So what we want to do here is click one year or all time. And then from this graph, uh, the green line is price. Uh, that's the one you want to look at. And then the blue line is the sales rank. So the blue line, we want it to go down and stay low. That means it's selling well. And then the green line, we want to make sure it's at a consistent price point. So it's here. It's been for $44.99 all, this month, all these months. And then they recently went down to $39.98. That's not a huge difference there. So price looks pretty consistent. We can also open X-Ray and then click on the sales graph here to see how many units per day the product has been selling since it launched. Uh, that's helpful. Also, I see variations as a possible thing with this product. So you could do the black metal first. You could do white metal next. You could do gray metal third. So there's really three products here. Or do the wood tone different. It's all black metal there for the shelving, but the wood is different. Like the first wood is just a medium wood tone. The second wood is white. The third wood is gray. Does that make sense? So you have really three products in one here. Uh, all right, so you can see this product launched here, 124, just last month. Uh, yeah, January 2024. They started making four to eight sales a day right out of the gate. Uh, they were making as many as 12, 10 sales a day. That's exactly what we want to do with a $40 item. And they've been pretty consistent here with around eight to 10 sales a day since then. So this product is good. Demand is good. It's a unique item. It's a newer market. It's not too competitive. There's ways to improve this. Let's do a rough profitability calculation on this. So if we sell it for $39.99 and it's going to cost us, let's say, $10 from the manufacturer, plus right now it's 1.4 per kilogram for DDP shipping to Amazon. Uh, the margins don't work out on it. Uh, I'm not sure how this seller is selling it for that cheap. Let me just make sure the numbers are entered correctly here. So it is coming at a small oversized 18 pounds. Um, if if it's truly 18 pounds, that's an issue. I think it's more like this. I think it's more seven pounds. That sounds about right for a three tier shelf like this. Uh, but you would need to check on that. We don't want the product to be over 18 inches on any one side and we can't have it small oversized. I think that's just a mistake. It is coming in at 18 pounds. I think more realistically, like six pounds is where this product you know should be as far as weight. So this calculator is showing that this product would not be profitable. To double check that, what I would do is grab the ASIN here and then let's go to the FBA revenue calculator and uh, let's do a profitability right through Amazon. So that, that calculator is from Helium 10. Let's also go to this one, which is right from Amazon, the company. We're gonna put in the ASIN, click search. It's gonna be not your fulfillment. It's gonna be under Amazon fulfillment. We're gonna sell the product for $39.99. The referral fee is $6. Uh, the fulfillment fee is $8. So eight plus six is your F total FBA fees. Uh, here, we're gonna put cost of goods sold as $10. And we'll put that it's gonna cost $3 per unit for shipping. 
Now we may be able to get the product for eight dollars, and then two two point five, you know, per uh, product for shipping. If that's the case, you pay eight dollars for the shelf itself with the changes and your brand name on it. You pay three dollars per unit for DDP shipping to Amazon from China. You're making eleven dollars and ninety eight cents profit every time you sell one, and that's about a thirty percent net margin. So these margins would work. These numbers would work if you can sell two hundred and fifty units a month. If you can sell 250 units a month, this is a growing market. So I think you could eventually get up closer to 300, 400, 500 sales a month times 250 times 11.98 profit per sale. This product would make you $2,995 profit every single month before PPC. You know, subtract maybe 500 a month for PPC. That's conservative, but... The first month, you'll have to obviously spend more to get the product launched and ranked. But once it's launched and ranked and performing well for its main keywords organically, uh, yeah, it's about two to $3,000 a month in profit and your sales would continue to grow. So you should see your profits uh, continue to increase as your sales go up. Okay, that, guys, is going to be how you use Black Box to, use, to find products. Now let's go over to um, Etsy. What, how do you find products on Etsy? All right, we're just going to go into different categories like home and living, you know, storage and organization. And then you really just have to go through here and look at different um, product ideas. So here I see one. It's a wood desk organizer. So how we would do this is, okay, we got the product idea, wood desk organizer. Then let's go over to Amazon. Let's type this in. Okay, we're going to type this in here. And I see 10,000 results. So right away, guys, I would not sell this product just based on how many results there are. That's too high. So we're going to pass on that one. Let's go back. We'll keep looking. Neckties, I've looked at Organizer. I've looked at this one. It's just, uh, it, it was just not enough demand for it, honestly. Not enough people, I think, are wearing ties as frequently as I would like. Um, let's keep going. So jewelry boxes, no. Shelving, it's kind of large. Uh under desk footrest. Okay, let's look at that. Under desk, under desk footrest. All right, I do like this. Only 674 results. That looks good. Uh, okay, let's talk about this. So the new Amazon thing is they show you 600 customers bought this in the last month. A thousand customers bought this in the last month. Eight thousand customers bought this in the last month. That's helpful, guys, for shoppers. But for us as sellers, it's actually not very accurate. So they typically only report this number, 1,000, as like 30 to 60% of what the actual sales are when you run the numbers from Helium 10. So you can look at that, but you really need Helium 10, the x-ray tool, uh, to show you what the sales actually are. But let's look at the numbers here. That's how you're going to use Etsy, guys, to find products. You just scroll through the different categories, look for something that solves a problem, kind of unique. Then we're going to run x-ray, and we're going to look at the numbers. So we are going to go here. Um, okay, so search volume looks good. It's 15,000 uh, customers per month are searching for this product. Total market revenue is 1.3 million. Average revenue is 34,000. That's good. Average reviews is pretty high, though, at 2,500. Uh, 2, Let's delete the uh, sponsored ones here. We're just going to look at the organically ranked sellers on page one. So if I look here, price is actually pretty inconsistent. So we have some at 14 12 dollars and we have some uh, for 50 dollars so there's a big price range here i'm not liking that revenue looks pretty solid uh we've got 6000 80000 9000 24000 uh but it's not spread out very evenly so it looks like the sellers with all the reviews are doing all the revenue but the other guys who have kind of lower reviews they're not doing the best um 17 views for a thousand sales. Yeah. So I'm not seeing a, an even distribution of numbers here. It looks like you have to have lots of reviews here to make uh, sales. So I'd probably pass on this one. The other issue with this one is seller country region. So I do not like to see this where it's China, 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 China. Uh, US is good. Uh, Amazon, China, Amazon, China. Okay. So I'm okay. There's going to be Chinese sellers in every single product and niche you go into or find. But I do need there to be at least, you know, two or three sellers in any other country in the world. I don't care if it's, you know, Vietnam or Europe or South America or Canada or Australia, just as long as it's not all CN. If it's all CN and AMZ like this, you know, it, it's an issue because it's mostly probably the manufacturers selling this item directly from China and their factories there. 
So it's going to be pretty hard to compete on your price and in, in, uh, as a result, make a good profit margin. So I would probably pass on this, guys. Uh, the revenues and sales weren't very consistent. Uh, and um, it was kind of dominated by Chinese sellers. So let's keep looking. Um, so lots of wood items. I do like wood. Wood is not a problem at all. China has lots of different woods. They offer palmona, acacia, bamboo, lots of different woods you can get in China. There's no issues on restrictions importing them. Uh, you just got to make sure they dry out. And if you're using any stains or paint on the wood, that it's non-toxic. Okay. Um, all right. So let's keep looking here. So we've got some oval magnetic boxes. Uh, that one's got a lot of reviews. 8,000 reviews. What is the oval magnetic box? Let's copy the keyword, what the product is. Let's go to Amazon. Um, oh, that's actually a product I found. I want to come back to that one. Oval magnetic box, only 12 results. Um, yeah, so actually I would pass on this one because it's going to be too hard. It's just a box, guys, or just a little oval magnet. I'm going to pass on that one. Let's go over this product that I found. So this was Champagne Tower. I either found this on Etsy. Uh, I believe this was Etsy or TikTok, uh, which we'll go over next. But let's run the numbers on this. So Champagne Tower, uh, pretty interesting here. I think it's mostly used for events and weddings and parties. That's okay. Uh, let's look at the numbers here. So we've got this one doing pretty well. 21 reviews making 10,000. It is sponsored. Four reviews making 3,000. That's really good. 1,000 making 40,000, 22 reviews making 3,600 a month, that's good. 22 reviews making 7,800 a month, that's good. 55 making 9,000, 4 making 3,000, 21 making 9,000. So what I see here is it's kind of a newer product. Uh, we have very low reviews, all under 100 on page one, and revenues are very strong, uh, all over 5,000. In fact, some are as much as 40,000, 10,000, 20,000 a month with only 50 reviews. I would do one like this. Um, so I would look into this product more. Let's make sure it's not all China. So no, it's not. We have China, US, China, China, Amazon, US. So there's at least two or three sellers, uh, not China. So I would definitely consider this one. Let's make sure it's not oversized and mostly all FBA. Yes. And, uh, large standard, large standard. There's one oversized, two oversized. The rest are good. And look at these ratings, guys. None of them have over a 4.8. So actually some of them are pretty bad, 3.8, 4.1. Lots of room to improve the product there by reading the negative reviews, running a helium tin poll on like four different competitors' images to find what customers like and don't like. So that's how we're gonna use Etsy and Blackbox to find products. And then for TikTok guys, you know, here you're just gonna type in Amazon must have finds 2024, uh, hashtag Amazon finds, whatever, you know, any search like that, Amazon home goods, you can go to the TikTok shop and just explore around. Uh, you just click shop at the top of your, um, your for you at the top. When you log into the TikTok app, you just click shop on the top. And then here, guys, what we're going to do is just look at each of these videos and try to find some ideas. So there wasn't anything that really came up. This definitely method of using TikTok takes a little bit more time because you have to watch each, you know, one to 10 minute video and look to see what products they're talking about. But I have found some interesting products in here, guys, um, that, that do solve a problem that were good. So use TikTok. It just takes a little bit more time than I have in this video to watch each one of these videos, see which products they're demonstrating. Then again, just gonna use the same method of going over to Amazon and searching for that product uh, and that kind of stuff. Now let's go over using the Amazon platform rabbit hole storefront method and new seller's best release list. New seller's best release list, guys, you just go here, new releases or best sellers, okay? And you would just look at new releases, get ideas that way. The storefront method is you're gonna click on this storefront here and you're gonna go to this seller who's doing well, who's already built a brand, who's already doing well. And we're gonna look at these other uh, products that they sell. So we've got uh, you know different items here. What I found doing this method was Nespresso drawer holder. Uh, all right, so this is Nespresso drawer organizer. This is a good product. So you wouldn't be able to use Nespresso, that word in your listing title because it's probably trademarked, but you could you could use just coffee pod storage and then make sure that in your main image and your images, you're showing Nespresso pods without the brand name so customers know that's what it's for and not Keurig ones. But look at this, we have good search volume, not actually, not actually the best search volume, but we have good numbers. It's a big market, 1.1 million. Um, it's a good average BSR, good average price, good average revenue. And if we look here, we have a variety of brands. 
not one brand dominating or big brands dominating. Price point is consistent, twenty to thirty-five dollars. Sales, one thousand three hundred sales a month with only two hundred reviews, doing twenty-seven thousand dollars a month in revenue. Uh, this is another good one, twenty-four ninety-nine, making five hundred and sixty-three sales a month, fourteen thousand dollars a month in revenue with only seventy-six reviews. Another one, twenty-six ninety-nine, making four hundred sales a month. 11,000 a month in revenue with only 75 reviews. It's in a good category. It's not oversized. Uh, I like this item a lot. Lots of ways to differentiate this thing. Let's do a quick, this one's wood, but there's some other ones that were like acrylic and actually nicer than this. Uh, yeah, I would do one kind of like um, kind of like this that either goes under the machine itself or in the drawer. This one's also the overall pick was nice as well. Let's do some rough profitability calculations on this. So this is a pretty simple product. There's glass on it. I, that, that doesn't bother me. Just make sure your supplier wraps it in bubble wrap and protects it well. Let's look at the graph while we wait for the profitability to load. Uh, yep, the BSR and sales uh, looks pretty consistent here. It's under 2,400 BSR. That's low. And the price has been pretty consistent around that $30, $35 mark this whole time. Let's look at the sales over since they launched. Make sure those are looking good. So we'll open X-ray, we'll click on the blue sales graph. Obviously this product solves a problem, it's not seasonal. There's not too many sellers because the total results was low and the reviews counts were low. So yeah, this thing is making like 125 sales a day, 200 sales a day, 100, 150 sales a day. All right, so lots of demand for an item like this. I like that. Ways to differentiate it, let's do profitability calculator. So I would sell this thing for $35. It probably only costs maybe seven or eight bucks for this thing. Uh, we're gonna change this to per kilogram. Right now it's 1.3, 1.4 per kilogram. So after the uh, FBA fees, everything like that, I'm left with $8 profit per sale, 24% net margin, 66% ROI. These margins are a little bit slim, guys. Uh, you would need to be able to sell this for $39.99 in order for your margins to be there. Uh, but unless you can get the product for $6, something like that, uh, it would work. So if you can sell it for $39.99, you add enough value, you can get the product for eight plus DDP shipping, 1.3 per kilogram. You're making $12 profit per sale, 31% net margin, 32% and 100% ROI. That would be my minimum I would need to make on a product. This product is you know, selling at least 500 sales a month, 500 times $12 profit per sale, is $6,000 a month in profit um, minus, let's say, $1,500 a month to $2,000 for PPC, you're still making $4,500 a month in profit. So this is another good item that I would look into. All right, the video went kind of long there, guys. The next steps from here, once you find a couple of product ideas, uh, to do the keywords, click on keywords, and then we're gonna validate the product has good demand and the data is good on the keywords by clicking keywords or opening Cerebro and copying and pasting the ASIN into Cerebro. And then just quickly, what you wanna look for here, guys, is there's multiple kind of longer tail keywords that have at least 2,000 or more search volume and not too many competing products, okay? So we've entered the ASIN, we're gonna click on search volume, we're gonna sort this high to low, then we're gonna just go down the list here, uh, storage drawers, Nespresso pods holder, there's the main keyword right there. It's got 40,000 searches a month, it's got a high IQ score. And look at this, guys, only 500 competing products. I like that a lot. This is a good product, lots of demand, not too many sellers, review counts are low, ways to differentiate. You would just have to not use the word Nespresso in your listing anywhere and in your photos, show Nespresso pods without showing the brand. Okay, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up from there. Next step would be to open up the sellers doing the most revenue and sales here and then start reading their negative reviews uh down here and looking what customers are using this for and then coming up with ways to differentiate this thing based off the reviews based off what customers are saying and then the next step guys is you're going to either run a helium 10 poll on a couple different designs just grab your competitors main images to run the poll uh, or have a product designer help you put together some different designs and then you're going to start reaching out to manufacturers on alibaba I'm gonna wrap up there for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video all about product research tutorial. I appreciate your support. You're welcome to uh, reach out to me if you need mentorship or coaching, and I'll see you on my next video.